Sonic, the heart of your system. 9990XE, which sounds like I'm talking a lot of German, is actually the 14 core CPU which I have on my test bench at the moment. So that's the very special CPU. Um, it's actually a pre bin CPU Intel is offering by auction to special retailers like us at Case King. So we had the chance to buy those CPUs over auction from Intel directly, which essentially makes them like a very special pre tested. CPU from Intel and Intel themselves, they say it's the fastest and best CPU Intel has to offer. If that's true, we will take a look at in this video. When I received the first spec sheet of this CPU in November, I was pretty confused. So I was looking at a CPU that was called 9990XE and then we know the 9980XE, which is basically an 18 core CPU that is unlocked so we can overclock the shit out of it. And that's typically the fastest CPU you could think of, we use for liquid nitrogen or whatever. And then I saw 9990XE, so you think it's kind of like an quicker version of the 18 core and then I looked at the specs and it said it's a 14 core CPU. Scrolling down over the specs I saw it's not only a 14 core CPU but it has 5 GHz boost across all cores which then made me smile for a moment because I thought holy crap that CPU has to be really fast. So let's go over the specs quickly. So on the left side you see the 9990XE which is a 14 core 28 thread CPU with a base clock of 4G and a boost clock of 5 GHz across, across all cores. And some of the specs I read online are not really correct because it has 19.25 MB of level 3 cache, which I saw on one website was not correct. And also the boost clock actually can boost up to 5.1 on few cores, but 5.0 is correct for all cores. Of course, we have a DDR4 support, 2,666 guaranteed, but typically, as all the other Skylake X, it's not really a problem to run a 3,200 or 3,600. It more depends on your motherboard. We have 68 PCI Express lanes. The CPU is soldered, the same as the other high core count CPUs, and it has a TDP of 255 watt, which is something you can throw out of the window completely directly because 255 is just complete nonsense. The CPU consumes so much more, but we will go over that later and the CPU is sold over auction. So I cannot really tell you the price of this CPU, I cannot really tell you how much we pay for those chips, um, but you can assume that it's the fastest CPU available, you know what a 9980XE costs, so you can kind of draw your conclusion a bit here. Also, every CPU is sold individually. So every CPU is, it's, it's like eBay, basically you have a list of CPUs and you just place bits on them and then depending how many other um, e-tailers are putting bits on them, you get your price. So the CPU is only sold to e-tailers like us, it will not be available in the normal retail market, so you will not find it anywhere to purchase as a single individual CPU. And first I thought, I don't really understand why Intel is doing that, but once I got the CPUs and once I tested them, I figured out why. So let's move over to my system. So you can see I have CPU Z open, you can see the CPU is complete stock, so I didn't really adjust anything. If I just right click into CPU Z, you can see the CPU is happily boosting into 5G across all the 14 cores, depending on usage. And now what's really interesting is if we check Core BID, we can already see the voltage the CPU is consuming is really, really high, which also then eventually leads to a very high power consumption, which we will take a look at later. But for now, let's, let's just run one Cinebench run quickly. You can probably hear my fans ramping up a bit, yeah, because power consumption now is over 500 watt, I can already say, tell you that. We will get into the details later. But if you take a look at core temp, you can see the CPU temperature ramps up to typically 100 to 110 degrees Celsius directly, which is obviously a result of the very high core voltage. So core VID is 1.37 volt, but the core, actual core voltage the CPU has, or the CPU is running at, is around 1.45 volt. So for a Skylake X CPU, it's extremely high, and it also explains why the power consumption is so high, but also shows a very high performance. So 3,800 um, points in Cinebench for 14 core CPU is really, really fast. So those aspects, vCore and temperature, and in result also power consumption, are probably the reasons why Intel is not giving them to normal customers. Obviously, you're not normal customers, otherwise you wouldn't watch this channel, right? But you have to keep in mind that there are guys 
they just purchase any CPU online, they see maybe they have enough money to waste, so they would buy the CPU, they would pair it with any random X299 motherboard, which then would not work, because if you want to run the CPU, there are pretty much only three choices. So you can use the, um, the Extreme Omega board from Asus, you can probably use the EVGA Dark and also the X299 Auros Master from Gigabyte. I think those three boards should be capable of handling the CPU when it comes to VRM and also VRM cooling. Um, at, I only tested the Extreme Alpha so far, but I think the other two boards should be fine from what I've seen so far. But you have to keep in mind that uh, there are a lot of people who don't know this. So they would just pair it with any main board and they would pair it with any kind of cooling solution. So maybe just, I don't know, attach a 120 AIO. Even this cooling solution here, so I have a 360 radiator on here, custom water cooling pretty much. So it's a laying DDC and I have an EK block. So that's pretty much water um, custom water cooling. And even this is really on the limit. That's absolute minimum you can use to run the CPU. I would personally recommend to use at least two 360 rats just for the CPU. So essentially Intel is just selling an extremely binned high core count CPU. And I think one reason why the CPU only has 14 cores is that Intel has a higher margin for binning. So they can obviously take all the high core count CPUs, which naturally have 18 cores, and they can pre-bin those CPUs and they have the room of disabling four cores. So if four of the cores are not good enough, they can just disable them and use 14 very good cores for those CPUs. And I can tell you that those are by far the best CPUs I've ever seen. We pre-tested hundreds of CPUs of Skylake Access at uh, Case King and not a single one I've seen is close to one of those chips. So also personally for me, this will be very interesting once I will have the time to tune one of those CPUs with liquid nitrogen. But now let's take a look at the purpose of those CPUs because when I first saw the specs, I was like, what would you use such a CPU for? What's the purpose? So the first benchmark we're looking at is Cinebench R15, obviously because it's very relatable and it's also very um, easy to perform. So on top we have the 32 core Threadripper with 5000 points, followed by the 9980XE overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz and then already followed by the 9990XE, so the 5 gigahertz 14 core CPU, which has exactly the same score as an 18 core with stock clock. So that's already really interesting. So the 14 core 5 gigahertz CPU compensates the less amount of cores just by having more performance across the 14 cores. Next test is Firestrike Ultra physics test and it's already really interesting that the 32 core Threadripper is on the bottom with uh, 57 FPS. It's even slower than the 8 core 7820X CPU, so the previous Skylake X CPU, which was not soldered, followed by a normal 14 core, so 9940XE, then followed by the 9980XE, so the 18 core, followed by 9980XE with 4.5 gigahertz OC. And then on top, we can see 9980XE just beats everything in this benchmark just because of having 14 cores with extremely high clocks. But let's go over to some real world performance and I'm showing you some numbers of Adobe Premiere 2019 rendering a 4K YouTube video. So exactly what you're watching right now, just took one of my previous videos and rendered it again with all the different hardware configurations. On the bottom we have the 8 core 7820X with about 16 and a half minutes followed by the 32 core Threadripper with almost 14 minutes. I was actually really surprised that the 32 core Threadripper was this slow in Adobe Premiere. I knew it was a much slower than a normal Skylic X or high core count Skylic X, but I didn't expect it to be this slow. Followed by the 14 core uh, 9940XE, then followed by 9980XE with 5 gigahertz OC, which is very interesting. So that's a manual overclock I did across this CPU. So basically fixed all cores to 5G, fixed the core voltage, but then you have to keep in mind that the core voltage is at every single core. If we keep the CPU stock, if it's using, using its own boost, the CPU will have an individual core voltage for every single core. So this kind of boost is more intelligent than what I'm doing when I do just the plain overclocking. If I would spend two or three more days on the CPU, I could figure out the perfect core voltage for every individual core. I could probably clock some cores to 5G, some, uh, some cores to 5.1G at the perfect core voltage. Then it would probably be faster by just doing quick OC with, I think it was like 1.375 volt across uh, 5G then it was uh, slower than using the CPU at stock. So the 9990XE 
at stock is about 10 minutes. 9980XE is almost the same speed, so it's just below 10 minutes, but 9980XE at 4.5G, so 18 cores at 4.5G is the fastest with eight and a half minutes. Let's go over to some Far Cry 5 numbers run at 1080p with ultra settings with 2080Ti. On the bottom you can see the 32 core Threadripper, so it's really slow with only 51 FPS average, followed by the 8 core 7A20X. And then if we take a look at the 9990XE, keeping it at stock, it's the fastest CPU in here if we don't touch anything. If we overclock the CPU, or if we overclock the 18 core, they're performing exactly the same. So we have about 123, 124 average FPS if we overclock the Skylake X above 4.5 gigahertz. It just shows that we are running into the GPU limit. So basically at this point, we're limited by the GPU and we would have to overclock the GPU or add another card to gather higher performance. But it shows that 9990XE would be the fastest solution for gaming in here. Now let's get to power consumption and those numbers are quite interesting. So on the bottom, we have the 7820X, obviously below 200 watt, followed by a 32 core Threadripper. It just shows again that the 32 core Threadripper is just a much more efficient CPU. It's a lot slower in all the use cases here, so it's slower in rendering, it's also slower in all the gaming applications, but it's a lot more efficient. Then followed by 9980XE and 9940XE at stock, and then 9990XE, holy shit, over 500 watt power draw, and this CPU is stock, right? We didn't touch anything in the BIOS. So I don't even know why Intel is saying it's 255 watt TDP. As I said before, it doesn't really make sense. It's it's so much, it's, it's more than double. So why even have a number there? So only the 9980XE 18 core CPU overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz manually is the king of the hill here with 600 watt power draw in Cinebench R15. In the initial presentation, Intel said the 9990XE is the fastest CPU and the fastest performance Intel has to offer, period. That's literally what they said. So is that true? I would say yes, because this CPU kind of combines a 9980XE multi-threading performance for let's say some kind of rendering work like Adobe Premiere, but it's also very suitable for gaming. So it's also kind of similar to a 9900K, which would be my recommendation or an 8700K if you want to have the highest FPS in gaming. So it's just an absolute crazy CPU in all kind of scenarios. So you can use it for basically everything. You can use it for gaming, you can use it for rendering. So that makes it probably the fastest CPU in the world and I would say Intel didn't lie here. So let me know what you think about the CPU in the comments down below.